Hey everybody, Rosemutter here, and welcome to part 88 of my Umineko Let's Play. It's good to be back from my little vacation. I hope you guys are looking forward to getting back into the series. Uh, so in the last episode, Beato has returned to the game, and, uh, you know, her and Badler, you know, like, everything is good, they're chill, they're friends. Uh, there's also a Halloween party slash uh, kind of like a pre-funeral for Kenzo, where he gave the gold back to Beato and says that, you know, essentially like he's the loan of the gold is over. He is giving his inheritance early to the adults and everything seems to be good. Like with the with the money given to to his kids, the gold being given back to Beato, it seems like the event shouldn't happen in this one. And Angie's still being a little dubious of everything going on. It still seems she's she's thinking like this seems a little bit too good to be true. But she seems to be kind of enjoying it, and uh, her little six-year-old self, you know, she had a wish that she never wanted this to end. So we'll see if that, like, plays a part in what she chooses to do with that key that was given to her. Uh, maybe to see whether she wants to see the truth or she just wants to stay in this world. But anyway, we're going to get back into this. I know it's been a while, guys, and I'm looking forward to it. So without further ado, let's get back into Umineko. What followed was a harmonious, fun stretch of time. Beautifully adorned dishes were brought in, one after another, and champagne corks were loosened with pleasant sounds. Several small tables were set here and there, each with its own theme. That was where the fun lay in the stand-up buffet table, as the guests wandered from table to table, pondering what they should eat first. This sort of performance was where Goda's genius shone through. The hotel that let him go should probably regret ever having done so. Of course, a stand-up buffet would probably be a tiring affair for the middle-aged, so chairs had been set up as well. However, each time a new dish was brought into the hall, they could get up to look and wander the tables however they pleased. This way, they could each bump into a new group of people and mingle elsewhere when that group melted apart. People are interesting. As the members in each group changed, so did the topic of conversation. The bustling Halloween party played out like a colorful kaleidoscope. The origami chains decorating the walls recalled one, to, uh, recalled one to one's youth. They would make anyone enjoy themselves as they did when they were kids. This does seem like a fun party. <laughs> Even to Angie, it was like a dream. She chattered happily with her cousins. She also chatted with her aunts and uncles. Beato showed her several tricks she called magic. Maria said they were magic, Angie said they were tricks, and the night grew even more lively. The two young girls were both so fired up that the adults decided to show some tricks they knew, shocking both of the kids utterly. Eventually, they each started showing tricks to the others, asking if they'd ever seen this one or that one before. And it became a party of magic, just perfect for Halloween. In addition to magic tricks, Several quizzes, riddles, and games popped up, reminding everyone of their childhood days. Even the servants who were serving food got dragged into the groups, and the whole fall, the whole hall filled with chatter. To Angie, young as she was, every single magic trick, quiz, and riddle was an entirely new experience. They stimulated her intellectual curiosity, and she couldn't contain her excitement. Add in the wide variety of delicious foods and drinks she could choose from, and it was like being in a dream. Angie felt a floaty sensation, as though she was walking on a cloud. She's like, she's probably like, if I could just live in this day forever, that wouldn't be so bad. Angie, <laughs> Come on, anyone who's been to any sort of family party has snuck in a little bit of alcohol here and there. Like my family, like my family, my cousins would sneak me like jello shots and stuff when I was like 14. <laughs> That's just how we do. Ava doesn't mean a bad drink as an alcohol, she just means he has poor taste in alcohol. She's like, try my alcohol, it's way better. That's 
そうよ。エンジは私たちみんなのお姫様よ。Is, is she, Kiri? Is she? I remember what you said about her last time. そうだな。I really don't want to believe that that's how she truly thinks. I, I, I don't think so. It's so sad. No, she did go to her house and they did not have fun. <laughs> Everyone was being really nice to me. It almost felt like I'd become a real princess. I felt so great. I could almost believe this whole celebration was being held for my sake. Medler stood outside that group of people as he watched Angie smiling happily from a distance. He smiled too. Yeah, he made that game for, um, for Beato, and it was like, what's the word? Like, it was full of understanding and love, but this is just, yeah, it's like a whole other level of his love for his sister. Will this just be like a perfectly pleasant this final game? No bad things will happen at all. That's what it seems like. I think we've, I think we've earned this. I think Angie's earned this. Battler's earned this. The readers earned this. Just for some happiness, even if it's not real. あの俺たちから見て正しくない選択であったとしても。ゲームマスターはそなただ。わらわはもはや何も口を挟まぬ。今宵をただ楽しむだけだ。エンジェにとっては意味あるゲームだ。だが、俺たちにとっては、お疲れ
この特製ザッハトルテをご用意させていただきましたご覧の通りチョコレートにて片翼のわしの紋章の風呂をつけた後ろ見分けだけの一品でございます The stupendous cake drew a gasp of admiration from all present. これは立派なケーキですな。目玉にふさわしいものです。いえいえ、ただのケーキではございませんよ。今夜のこのケーキには秘密が。Yeah, I think that's it. 親方様、どうかそれを皆様にお話しくださりますよう。よろしくお願いいたします。うん。これはささやかなゲームであるぞ。このケーキには一つだけ。Uh, and, yeah, and was... The thing she was telling was very important to Badler. But he already knew. He made this game, of course. <laughs> oh, an almond, yeah. Angie shouted happily. Did I say almond? I knew it was some sort of like there was like a nut or something.、Uh, Kenzo looked at her fondly and nodded. このケーキの中の一切れだけにアーモンドが一粒入っておる。This game really just does make it seem like Kenzo just loves games. And then that whole thing with like the resurrection of Beatrice was just like a little. just a little game he made himself. It wasn't supposed to end in murder. そのケーキを選んだものが今夜の王様であるぞ。Of course, Angie will find it and she will be the queen or the princess. <laughs> 王様ゲームなんて久しぶりだぜ。あなたのは。いや、I was gonna say、King's game is something different than I like from what I've heard and seen in other games <笑>。さて、王様になると、どんなことがあるのですかな。王様は、願いを一つ口にすることができる。それを皆で叶えようではないか。Maybe Angie's will be like, I want this day to last forever, or like, I want a family to always be together, or something like that. Why not a queen? エンゼはすごいなこういう時はクジウがものを言うんや負けへんでお待ちなさいよ小さい子から順に選ぶといいわそれがいいですねエンジェちゃんからどうぞコーラマリアはお姉さんでしょエンジェちゃんを先にしなさいおおおおエンジェが当たりを引いちゃったらどうするのアーモンドがあたりアーモンドがあたりアーモンドがあたりアーモンドがあたりアーモンドがあたりアーモンドがあたりアーモンドがあたりアーモンドがあたりアーモンドがあ In front of Angie lay a large cake cut so there was one piece for each of them. Just one of those pieces was the winner. So, Angie, Sama, don't know cake in a sign, Mascana. Dore or Erandemo, hop petago, cochirhodo, or she does you. Yada, Atari knows an eye to Yada. She's like, I don't want to eat your stupid cake, I just want the almond. He puts the Atemisir Scanina. Hora, Erabe, Rabe. Badler pushed Angie's small back towards the table with the cake. The chocolate cake was cut into 15 pieces. I want to pick the one with an almond and become the princess. Oh, it does look good. God damn. One of them has the winning almond. Which could it be? I get to choose first, but it sort of feels unfair. I mean, it is, isn't it? My chances of getting the right one are 1 in 15. No, no, your chances are probably 100% because this is rigged to you. There's no way I'll get it. And then when Maria Onichen goes after me, she has a 1 in 14 chance of picking the winner. The next person has a 1 in 13 chance, then 1 in 12, and the last person will win for sure. Onichen, this is bad. 
Everyone laughed. Apparently, there was something wrong with my calculations, but it still didn't feel right to me. If I have to pick one out of so many, there's no way I'll win. But for some reason tonight, it feels like I might actually win after all. I have no reason for feeling this way, but when I'm in a good mood, Lady Luck always brings me fortune. This is the girl that jumped off a building and survived. So... I concentrated on my fingertip and pointed at one of the 15 slices. The slice I chose was... Oh, I get to choose! Oh, I get to make a choice! I mean, it doesn't matter, it's rigged, right? I'm gonna go with eeny, meeny, miny, mo. That's cool! I like the idea of, like, it doesn't matter which one I pick because it's all written in stone of how it's gonna go. When he asked me whether I was sure, I felt a little uneasy. Still, at times like this, it's better to stick with your instincts. It was one of the few bits of philosophy that the young girl had learned from her few life experiences. Soda took the chosen slice, put it on a plate with a fork, and handed it to Angie. Doesn't matter, Maria, I'm gonna get it, so it doesn't even matter. I might not at all, but I'm like, I'm figuring that the way Badler was talking, Angie will get the almond. Trying to ruin her whole... I'm gonna ruin her whole career. It was Maria's turn next. She was excited, determined to be the winner. I walked away from the group all by myself. I was struck by the temptation to quickly cut the cake open with my fork and check for an almond inside. However, I stopped myself. If I check my piece first, my chance of winning is 1 in 15. However, if I wait for some other people to check their slices, and when I see that they've lost, my chance will go up if only slightly. Okay, not quite to this level, but I have these weird kind of things that I think to myself, like... The way I do things has no bearing on the chances of things actually happening. Um, but yet, I will still do, like, weird little rituals and stuff, as if that makes any difference at all. Like, for example, sometimes, like, I will think that a thing won't happen. And if I tell myself the thing won't happen, like, if it's something that I'm, like, looking forward to... If I tell myself the thing won't happen, then in my mind, it's almost like I'm doing reverse psychology on the universe, and then the thing will happen. <laughs> in other words, instead of searching for the almond right away, my chances will go up if I wait for other people to lose. But if someone picks a winner when I'm sitting around here, the chances of my slice being a winner will go to zero. It'll be tough to calculate the right moment. I need to wait just long enough for as many losers to show up as possible. My chances of winning are highest if I can check my piece immediately before someone else wins. Yeah, that's the trick to winning this game. What a strange thought. It feels like I'm missing something, even though no one else can touch the cake that's sitting in front of me. The almond inside it will appear or disappear depending on whether or not the other person wins or loses, or win or lose. I was in such a good mood that I felt dizzy, and I couldn't figure out what was wrong with my theory, but I did realize something was strange. There's always just one truth inside a cat box. No matter what happens outside the box, it shouldn't be able to shake the truth inside. And yet, I'm being influenced by events outside the cat box and trying to make them affect my observation of the box's contents. I don't even know what I'm saying. Another me inside is trying to say that, but it's too hard for me to understand. I feel like I'm drifting. I got so cheery and excited. Even though I'm not sleepy, my mind feels hazy. Maybe it's because I drank Dad's adult drink. So it's like a weird thing about, like, she thinks that she can manipulate the, uh, the results by... the observation. Huh. In the end, even though I'd chosen the first piece, I decided to check it last. After I'd seen everyone else had lost, my chances of winning will be 100%. I tried to find the contradiction in my thinking, but I didn't really get it, so I stopped. Much better to have a 100% chance than a 1 in 15 one. So I decided to bet on that. I couldn't wait to open this precious treasure chest. But I waited for everyone else to choose their piece and check them. Oh, 
my luck i would be i'd be enjoying my cake so much i'd accidentally eat the almond and be like ah oh, no damn it ハズレでも本当に美味しくて美しいザハトルテだね。食べずに飾っておけるものなら、そうしたいくらいだよ。どうだ。アーモンドあったか。私もダメね。秀吉兄さんはどう?わしもハズレのようや。会社に嫁に
Angie had been worried Ava would be declared the winner since she had spoken up first. So she hadn't even dreamed that Ava would give it to her. I want this fun time to keep on going forever. Yep, that's exactly what I thought she was going to wish for. Young me spoke for the desire in my heart. I get the feeling the nuance has changed. Still, that was unmistakably my wish. ぜ this is a new song, I think, maybe? Or maybe this was like way back with uh, Sakakaro. お姫様に楽しんでもらえるクイズをみんなで献上するのですね。なるほどね。了解したよ。ああ、なるほど。面白いではないか。では、エンジェよ。こうしよう。みんなにクイズやなぞなぞを出してもらい、それに挑むがよい。見事解けるたびにそなたにメダルを一枚与えよう。メダルって記念メダルってことだろうな。いっぱい正解できればいっぱい集められるんだろうぜ。ただ集め
suddenly got tense and my stomach began to feel tight. Then Auntie Ava gently held my hand. Oh. How appropriate considering that it just passed. Christmas? Even though it was October, he suddenly started talking about Christmas. Is he going to ask what day Christmas is? I know that. It's December 25th. Christmas no hi. Yozora o miyange nagara onna wa itta. Yagate yoru ga akete asa ni naru wa ne. Soshite mata higa shizunde yoru ni natte mo mata Christmas datta ra ii no ni. Suruto otoku wa itta. Ii yo. Sono yume o kanaete ageru yo. そんなことも果たして可能だろうかクリスマスの次の日は二十六日で普通の日だもそんなの無理夜が明けてもまだクリスマスうん hmm. I was like should I be able to get this all I'm thinking is maybe Christmas in other parts of the world or may not have happened yet おばさんわかった <laughs> Damn, she's she's smart. How can the day after Christmas be Christmas again? God damn it, am I gonna be dumb like Angie? Will I be able to get any of these? Oh my gosh! Ah there's actually what? Oh my gosh, I love this. I I was kinda hoping I was like, oh my gosh, is there actually am I actually gonna be able to like guess what the um what the riddles are gonna be okay oh my gosh and i'm actually oh this is so cool i've had to wait so long but i actually get to like do things okay we'll say it's possible we'll say a oh didn't think about that uh, damn. That's, that's embarrassing. Angie's smarter than, than I am. I was just thinking about, like, maybe other parts of the world it hasn't been Christmas yet, so it can still be Christmas. Oh, she's six, man. Hmm. <laughs> With a delighted smile, Auntie Ava patted my head vigorously. I feel like if Genji were to give me uh give me one it would be impossible i don't know he, if he, he feels like he would be the final boss of quizzes and, and and like riddles i'm not very good at puzzles i like to think i'm okay at riddles um when it's like wordplay and stuff like that or like um abstract thinking but sometimes i'm not <laughs> genji san genji san held out a gold colored medal grandfather smiled at me urging me to take it <laughs> Alright, who's gonna be next? Ooh. I wonder... Maybe I get to do it in whatever order I want, too. Look at this. This game went from, like, giving me no, um, control over stuff to, like, I got to choose my piece of cake. I get to actually choose... <laughs> I should have done... <laughs> I should choose everything wrong on impossible. And then, like, maybe Valor would just rewind it and be like, no, 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 do it again. This has to go perfectly. There was a heavy gold-colored medal. If I get a lot of these right, my pocket might burst. I'm going to get so many that I can brag about it to everyone. After bowing to Grandfather, I hurried off with Auntie Ava to where everyone else was gathered. Yay! <laughs> I know all of this probably means nothing. I don't know if this has any bearing on 
on this at all. It's just a fun little game, but I still am very excited about this. As Angie ran off, Kinza watched her go with a warm gaze. ちょいと簡単すぎたかな。いいえ、ちょうど良かったと思います。ケンジ、私は良いおじいちゃんを演じられただろうか。無論でございます。エンジは幼い。I would say for for some people you've not been a good grandfather. そして体調を崩し、六軒島へ来ないことも多かった。not a good father, even if we're just talking about Beato for obvious reasons. Young children have their own kind of cruelty. They think of kindness as something they will naturally receive. And because they think of kindness as only natural, they forget about it quickly. Kenza's expression grew slightly darker. Eventually, even Angie will get older, and she'll probably hear uh, how the public at large regards Ushirimiya Kenzo. I mean, not wrong, the Ushirimiya Kinzo known by the public is completely different from the Kinzo who plays with his grandchildren. When she learns, will Angie remember the face of Kinzo the Tyrant, known by the world, or that gently smiling face? I want to believe this is how the, the real Kinzo was. And Angie just didn't remember, and it's a whole thing like he just said, you know, she she was too young to remember him, barely ever met him, and just knows him as like a cruel person. <sighs> and that's certainly the way he's come off to us all this time. ウシロミヤ金蔵がどれほどの奇人変人であったかを知るだろう。それに塗りつぶされ、そなたの笑顔など忘れ去られる運命よ。であろうが、いくら甘やかせど報われぬ愛である。だが、親の恩を思い出す
feel free. Leave your best riddles or things like that. Um, let's see if I can figure them out. <laughs> Maybe I'll read them and then I will try and answer as many as I can. See if I get the right answers or not. And maybe other people can also guess as well. I think that'd be fun. Behind him are mom and dad. They're waving at me, telling me to have lots of fun. Dad probably knows a lot of really hard questions. He might be tough. I would say, like, Kyrie would probably know some, some good ones. Over there is Auntie Rosa and Maria Onichen. It looks like they're reading a quiz book together, searching for a problem. Every now and then, Maria Onichen glances over at me, saying, Kee hee hee hee. She can be mean sometimes, so I'm sure her puzzle won't be a nice one. Beyond them are Badler Onichan, George Onichan, and Jesko Onichan. Badler Onichan is usually nice, but he sometimes says really mean things, and I think he likes seeing me get confused. I get the feeling that he'll give me a really tough problem. Is there anyone else who looks like they won't be mean? If I can, I'd like to start with some easy puzzles to warm me up. All the way over there are Genji-san and Dr. Nanjo. I don't think those two will be mean to me. <laughs> I've, like I said, I feel like Genji would give you a very hard one. And then there's Shannon and Canon. Shannon knows a lot about quizzes and fairy tales. I'm sure she'll give me something unique. Then we have Goda-san and Kumasawa-san who are serving tea. Kumasawa-san might be tough. I kind of think she'll give me a really confusing problem. Probably something about fish. <laughs> it looks like everyone might be pretty tough. Damn, is this whole episode just going to be me doing quiz questions? I'm not... I'm not mad about that. Now, maybe it's just going to, like... Maybe it will streamline me into exactly doing it in the order the game wants me to. Uncle Hideyoshi's calling for me. What should I do? Should I go? Oh! Can I actually choose? I think what I'm going to do here, actually, is I think I'm going to save. Because... I don't know if giving the right answers or wrong answers will actually, like, change things, but <laughs> I could cheese it, and I could just do it over and get the right answers if I get them wrong. <laughs> Alright, so it doesn't matter. So I am going to be doing his first. Okay. I rolled up my sleeves and headed over towards Uncle Hideyoshi. Alright, let's see what we got here. <laughs> よく来たな。わしのは難しいで。あなたが出す問題ってどんなのかしら。あまり難しすぎるのを出しちゃダメよ。難しくてもいい。たくまん。Oh boy, she's confident. I wish I was as confident as her. おお、頼もしいことや。ほな、行くで。after clearing his throat, Uncle Hideyoshi started telling his question. <laughs> oh no, this is a bad start. I do not know the story of Momotaro. Um, alright, let's check it out. Momotaro, or Peach Boy, is a Japanese fairy tale named after its main character, Momotaro. The full story is a little too long to tell properly, but it should suffice to explain. It is about a boy who was born from a giant peach, which came floating down a river. Okay. Soya,しかしな,その川には甘栗が流れてきたんや。甘栗?Soya,そしたら次の日にはな? Okay, hold on, wait. Okay, a peach, an apple, a butternut squash, a cabbage, a dill pickle. Okay, so it's not just... Okay. Huh. Eggplant. A fig.変な話よね。上流に八百屋さんでもあるのかしら。さて、問題や。その次の日には。Oh, wait, what? Okay. Oh, wait, what? Okay. Oh, wait, what? Okay. Oh, wait, what? Okay. Oh, wait, what? Ok
じゃあヒントをあげるわね、okay. 流れてきたものにはちゃんと順番があるのよ何の順番かわかるかしら<笑>そら大ヒントや、ね uh, Apparently it's a huge hint but I'm like I don't, I don't get it Is it the sizing? Okay Okay so an apple I don't know squat because it's not going in, in I was like maybe if it was in terms of like it's getting bigger there's an apple butternut squash is bigger than an apple I think a cabbage would be about maybe bigger than a butternut squash a dill pickle definitely is not and then an eggplant and then a fig and then it gets small again ah uh, I was like hmm okay hold on apple butternut maybe it's like divide uh, I don't know oh oh Derp. I got it. A, B, C, D, E, F. Grapefruit G. Got it. Yeah, all right. That wasn't so bad. Once it's like, once it's laid out like that and I could look at it from top to bottom, I'm like, ah, okay. The names all follow the alphabet. Apple was A, butternut squash was B. I was so like, like some like sizing, but cabbage was C. Okay, so that actually is a big hint when you talk about the order. It kept going with D, E, and F. So after F comes G. That's why the answer had to be something that started with G. Thank <laughs> Maybe it will go in terms of like easy to hard because that was actually pretty easy. Hideyoshi took out a gold colored medal and placed it on my palm. It felt heavy in my hand. Yeah, this is what victory feels like. I better keep it up. Maybe Ava will give me a riddle. Yeah, all right. I could see Eva. Eva? <laughs> I could see Ava having some difficult ones. Auntie Ava smiled brightly. I want to get as many medals as possible, so of course I want as many chances as I can get. Oh, maybe I should save just in case. Yeah, I know, I'm cheesing it, but... おばさんは旅行が大好きだって話はしたことがあったかしらうん。エバおばさんはよく海外旅行へ行くって言ってた。そうよ。だから旅行の問題を出すわね。あるところに旅人がいたの。旅人その旅人はまず北へ5キロ
そんなことあるわけないでこういう磁石がいかれたんとちゃうかそんなのじゃないわよ<笑>エンジェちゃんわかる大い磁石のせいじゃないのこれはなぞなぞいいえちゃんとしたクイズよヒントはね地球儀でよく考えてみて OK Ah, God damn it. All right. I was hoping I get to see a picture of a globe. Okay. This could be a matter of like maybe if they're on、uh, like an equator or something, right? Like that might be how they end up in the same place. So five kilometers north, and then east, and then south. And then... The place is real. Okay. So when I think of the like, I think of like either equators or poles, and those are cold. So I'm going to say it's a cold place. Oops, I didn't mean to skip. Yeah! Woohoo! Yeah! Woohoo! Okay, so I'm going to. また南極点に戻るだけの話っちゅうわけやとっておきの難しい問題のつもりだったんだけどエンジェちゃんは本当にすごいな、no, that was supposed to be extra hard maybe she's just placating me but all right I'm feeling good so far おめでとうさんやほなこれがもう一枚のメダルや I got a heavy gold colored medal all right I did it Auntie Ava and I held up our fist in celebration <laughs> これでわしらの問題はおしまいや。他の人に問題を出してもらうといいで。うん、ありがとう、秀吉おじさん。エヴァおばさんは賢いで。二人一緒ならメダルもザックザクや。As long as she keeps giving me hints. ええー、そうよ。ザックザクよ。うん、一緒に頑張ろう、エヴァおばさん。I dashed away. Who will I ask next? Uncle Hideyoshi waved goodbye, smiling. I wonder what happens if you get no medals. <laughs> Kinzo's like, I, under I, I overestimated you. You fail. <laughs> you're, you're clearly non Ushur Mia. Hideyoshi and Ava watched as Angie ran off happily, looking for the next quiz. あんなにも可愛らしい笑顔を浮かべられる子なのに私がそれを奪うのね。Alright, so the pieces are like aware of what's gonna happen. Same with Kinzo, where it's just like knowing that Angie thought of him as just a, a mean person and he didn't remember her. Eva. Eva hung her head. A single tear sparkled in her eye. 彼女の気持ちを考えれば。それは当然のことなのよでも私はそれを受け止めきれなかったしゃあないお前かて人間やでそうそう人間割り切れるもんとちゃうそれでも私が悪いのよ仮にも一時を育てた母だったのよあの子の母親に私はなるべきだったなのに、私は悲しみに溺れ、それをしなかった。しゃあない、しゃあない。お前だけが悪いわけとちゃうで。そんなに自分を責めたらあかん。By now, Ava was unable to hold back her sobs. Large tears dripped down her cheeks as she stared at the ground and shook. I don't know why this is affecting me so much. It's just like. You know, after the previous games, where like it showed the aftermath of like Ava and Angie, and seeing like Ava seemed to be so cruel to her, and now seeing it from her point of view and showing like the regret and seeing it from her, you know, her side. あの子の気持ちを全く受け止めなくて
It seems to be, uh, that's something that Higurashi and Umineko seem to share, is, like, the thing about people being so into their feelings and what how they're feeling that sometimes they don't think about how their actions might affect other people, or if they, like, keep things to themselves, they don't talk about it with people and share, you know, their concerns or how they feel and how it can affect the relationships. I mean, the big thing is definitely, like, Shannon and, and Badler, and that seems like to be the all-encompassing thing here, but you see it with these characters as well. Kiri and Rudolph were standing behind Ava now. After the accident on Rokunjima, Ava, the only person to leave Rokunjima alive, adopted Angie, the girl who had survived the day through her absence. It's so weird hearing that if you think about if Rudolph and Kiri were the ones to kill Ava's family, and then to try and console her about like, well, you did the best you could, and also we might be kind of to blame too, because, you know, that wouldn't have happened if we hadn't done what we did. I still, I still don't know what to think about that. I still don't want to believe that that's actually how it went down. Well, they would eventually develop a sad and mutually painful relationship. It wasn't like that at first. As Angie's new mother and last remaining blood relative, Ava tried to shower her with love and affection, even as she fought back the sadness she herself felt. However, Angie wasn't able to accept that kindness. She lashed out at Ava, the only one who had returned alive, and accused her of stealing her parents away from her. Ava, understanding the wounds that this little six-year-old girl bore, withstood these attacks. She grits her teeth and gave Angie her unconditional love. However, the wounds Ava herself bore were also extremely deep. She was never rewarded for her sad efforts, and the future that followed was a sorrowful one. あなたは演者に上司君に注いだのと同じ愛情を与えようとしてくれたわ。でもそれは私だけの独り善がりで、演者ちゃんには全く届かなかった。それを受け止めなかったのは演者だ。羽根木の聖じゃない。六歳の演
Ava too. To have like some sort of um what's the word I'm thinking of? Ah uh, like some closure. I feel like everything she did wasn't for nothing. But it's sad because right now it kind of is, because Angie still hates Ava. Alright, man, that was really emotional. Now we're just back into the quizzes again. Also, guys, I'm sorry. Uh, just in that quiet moment, I just realized that the fire alarm's going off in my building. Um, <laughs> I think that they're just doing a fire test right now because uh, these noise-canceling headphones are quite good. I didn't even notice for the longest time. <laughs>この熊さんも。Gota and Kumasawa offer to challenge me. I'll have to go up against everyone in the end, so it doesn't matter who comes next. I waited Auntie Ava to hurry up, and she ran toward me. <laughs> I wonder if, like, if I got the first couple wrong, maybe she wouldn't be quite so confident. それはそれは。それでは、ゴーダらしく台所とお料理の問題を出させていただきます。今度は共闘しましょう。わからない時はおばさんを頼ってね。何かヒントを出せるようにするわ。ヒントもらうとメダルはもらえない。メダルとは関
メダルでございますありがとう、yeah, um, All right, that was easy. Now let's take a shot at Kumasawa s a n s I feel like Kumasawa might actually give me a tricky one. I'm doing all right so far. では取っておきの難しい問題で。では参りますよ。難しいってどのくらい？それは挑戦してみてのお楽しみ。それでは私はサバのデザートの問題を。I <笑> Okay, the cook was in trouble. The only part of the dinner left to prepare was the dessert, but he had no ingredients except for the leftovers of a mackerel dish he called the bara. However, the cook had a flash of inspiration. By adding in just one new letter to replace an old one, he could make a great des、uh, dessert out of those leftovers. What new letter did he use? Oh gosh, okay, this is a word puzzle. Okay, I might need to write stuff down. Now, the thing is, hopefully, it's not like a Japanese term that I don't know. All right, hold on, guys. Let me just get a piece of paper and a pen. <laughs>、um, let me try this. All right, I got it. <laughs> it's not dessert, it's desert. So it's Sahara. So it's sea. Tricky, tricky. You just gotta be careful. You gotta look and make sure it's like, all right, it's a wordplay. <laughs> it's so dumb. If I just like looked, if I just looked more closely and realized it's a desert and not dessert, I probably could have figured that out quicker, but it literally took me like. Writing things down, I'm like, none of these words are words I recognize until I got to Sahara. Oh, head padding, just like with that there. サバ肉を足したらデザートにもなるなんて簡単にサバはすごいですねそんなダジャレでデザートをサバにした日には私の首が飛んでしまいそうですエンジェもやだデザートはアイスがいい確かに大丈夫よね<笑><笑> <laughs> Everyone burst out laughing. For some time after that, I was tormented by the terrifying image of a parfait neatly topped with mackerel bits. I mean, I'll admit that one took me a little bit of time. Because the funny thing is, when I was writing out a bunch of these, I was like, Samara,、um, like, Satara, Tabara. I'm like, these could be Japanese desserts that I don't even, like, I've never heard of before. <laughs> Though she said that, Kumasawa smiled. A gold colored medal glittered in her wrinkly hand. Angie took it. I didn't even need Ava's help for that one. We rushed away. Okay, who should we take on next?
You know, I'm feeling pretty confident. I'm not gonna save in between quizzes this time, or like the questions. <laughs> Uh, it's so sad thinking about like nope not really cruel fate forces the chick called Angie into a lonely future if an egg isn't warmed it won't hatch the egg she is now will not be warmed by anyone and neither will it hatchエンジェ様は冷え切った卵のまま孤独な未来を迎えるほかないのでしょうか。卵の殻はいつだってうちがわから破られるもの。冷え切った殻はとてもとても硬いでしょうが、それでも破れぬものではありません。エンジェ様に
私たちには見守ることしかできないのですねだからせめて祈りましょう彼女が最も望む未来をその手につかめるようにおや私どもご指名ですかうんどうせ全員に挑むもんねえおばさんねえ<笑>さあ私たちに問題を出してちょうだいサクサク解いちゃうんだから<笑>そうですかそうですかではとっておきの問題を出さないといけませんな源氏お前も何か出題してやるがいいとっておきをなかしこまりましたそれではとっておきを<笑> Damn I thought he was gonna be the final one <laughs> Whoa I've been thinking Genji-san would give me a simple puzzle but now he's saying it'll be tough Scary But I'll have to beat him at some point I can't let myself get scared では私から参りましょう私はお医者さんですからな救急車の問題でも出すとしましょう Oh, jeez. Okay. The word. Oh, no. This is going to be a math one. Shit. This might do me in. The word QQ means emergency. In Japan, if you add a certain number, question mark, to emergency, you'll get a vehicle with a red flashing light and an ambulance. If you subtract question mark from 130, you'll get a different kind of vehicle with a red flashing light. Oh, my gosh. And in the US, if you add question mark to emergency, you could get either kind of vehicle, but only if you put it in reverse. Oh gosh, okay. Q is a number in Japanese. Auntie Ava can help with us. Yes, please. Hatena wa suji na no? Demo, QQ wa moji de so? Suji tas moji nan te kesan deki na yo? QQ te no ga nan da ka dajare poi wa ne. Ava knows about that with the,、uh, the epitaph. Hora, QQ. Oh, nine. Okay. So maybe. Either maybe nine plus nine or nine times nine? Tsumari. You get blanks in 99, you get an ambulance. Okay, so 99, okay. Of course she does. Please, car. Okay. Uh, I wish I did. Okay. Oh no. Okay. So, so if you subtract the、so、130. Oh boy. I don't know. So I don't understand why they. Okay. So QQ means emergency. So if you add a certain number to emergency, you'll get a vehicle with a red flashing light. Okay. So 99 equals ambulance. Okay. So. Oh boy, oh boy. Okay, so 130 minus 99 is 31, and that's a police car. Okay, if you add blank. Oh god, okay.、Ah. Oh god, this is so hard. Okay, you add 99. Uh, I don't know this one. This is. You had a certain number to emergency. Oh, and I can't ask her again. Ah.、Uh... So, yeah, what is the number that is. Oh, wait, no, no. Q... Okay, so QQ. I'm. I don't know, guys. I'm just gonna guess. I'm gonna say. Uh, uh, see? <laughs> This one I don't I don't know. I got that one wrong. I am having trouble. Yeah, I mean, it had to come to an end eventually. I, I should have known that there was going to be a goddamn riddle that was going to get me. It was going to be a math one. I hate math. Nanjo, don't. Okay, don't, don't make me feel worse. It's a bit annoying to hear about a puzzle I don't get. Still, no matter how annoyed I get, I still don't have a clue what the answer is. And I didn't save beforehand, I'm going to accept my answer is wrong. 
Please explain it to me. Apparently, Auntie Ava knows the answer. She looked disappointed I hadn't figured it out. Oh, tell me what the answer is, please. I don't understand what that means. What does that mean? Uh, I feel so dumb. <laughs> Can somebody, can somebody please explain what I was supposed to do there? Ugh. I'm definitely better with, like, wordplay and word puzzles over number puzzles, for sure. <laughs> the gold medal passed from Nanjo to Kinzo. I didn't realize we were in competition, Kinzo. The medal was supposed to be mine. It's no use regretting it now. Okay, here we go. If you subtract two from and add 60 to an ambulance, how would that tell you the weather? Hmm? Yeah, I don't have a clue. I'll just have to pick myself up and have a go at Genji's puzzle. No! Ah, I wanted them to tell me in explicit detail exactly what that meant. Ugh. Never heard anyone say prepare yourself like that when giving a quiz. I was about to say, I'm like, damn, this dude takes it seriously. I started to get so tense that my stomach began to hurt. Uh, you know what? No, I'm going to save. I feel sh I feel shaken now that I've got an, a wrong answer. <laughs> Auntie Ava gripped my hand firmly and my stomach ache got a little better. No! No, we have another math question! Fuck, this is the worst one! <laughs> I don't like these two. She didn't say she was good at it. <laughs> Alright, here we go. That's, I'm gonna get my paper ready. This is bad. I did learn division, but I'm not very good at it. Same, Angie, same. The difference is she's six. We have a lit candle five centimeters in length. The candle is made so that half of its remaining length burns away over the course of each hour. Each hour, the candle is half as long as it was before, and when its length is one centimeter or less, the flame goes out. After three hours, the flame has disappeared. What was the length of the candle at the time? Okay, so this we're just going to have to do... Uh, we're going to just... I could figure it out through, uh, you know, the, the fact that they gave a hint about that it's division, um, but we'll just have to do a centimeter to millimeter uh, conversion. I'll just use my phone for that. So it's 10. So. Okay, so one centimeter is 10 millimeters. So five centimeters, obviously, is going to. Oh, it's going to be 50. Okay. So we have a five. So 50 millimeter candle. So half of its remaining length burns away over the course of each hour. Okay. I, I could probably figure this out after three hours. What was the length of the candle at the time? So when its length is one centimeter or less, the flame goes out. Okay, so then it should be 10 millimeters. Oh, right, because, yeah, centimeter is equal to... Okay, that's... Unless there's some trick. It should be E. I think I got it, because I feel like otherwise she would just be like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> She's overthinking it like I am. <laughs> now, unlike her, um, I actually, I have a phone where I can just figure out, like, okay, what's the conversion rate? 
and I probably didn't even need, you know, millimeter to centimeter is pretty obvious. But you know what? I'm a little um, burnt out right now after failing that last one. So I'm just like, I'm not making, I'm not taking any chances. <laughs> The flame on the candle dies when the candle is one centimeter in length. In other words, it can never get shorter than one centimeter. So the right answer is the fifth choice, about ten millimeters. Yeah. Oh, so that was that was oh clever of you to just kind of like uh prime her to think おめでとうございます、エンジェ様。こちらが私の問題を正解したことの証であるメダル。ありがとう。エヴァはさ、また<笑> いっぱい集めて、おじいさまに素敵なご褒美をもらうの。うん、張り切るが良いぞ。我が孫よ。頑張れ、エンジェさん。あんたの分を祈ってるよ。他の方もお待ちでしょう。さあ、ぜひ次
At first I was thinking maybe it's something to do with chess, because like this game is all about chess, but I mean, I feel like chess it's a little advanced for for a six-year-old. I could always ask Ava, but she seems just as stumped as me. Now, the problem is, is this, is this like relevant more to a Japanese school? Or is this a universal thing? <laughs> A.K. give me a hint. そうですかでは、ヒントは白、黒、白、黒。いろいろありますけど、どれを押しても、とても綺麗な音が鳴りますよ。おお、おお、おお、おお、おお、おお、おお、おお、おお、おお、おお、おお、おお、おお、おお、
Following companies have the following floors. Okamura Securities on the first floor. Iwamura Reality, uh, Realty is on the second floor. Tamura Transport is on the 14th floor. I know that Murakoshi Publishing Co. is also a tenant of the size... <clears throat> Of the skyscraper so that company must also be on the something floor however the company president insists to me it isn't on which floor is morikoshi publishing okay so let's let me do a thing here i'm just gonna so all right so okamura uh okamura first floor okay uh iwamura Second floor. This is probably a math one. You probably have to do some like multiplication or something. Uh, Tamora. We're going to put it way, it's way up at the top. Tamora Transport. 14th. Okay. So it's a tenant. Which floor is it located? Let's see. So I go, so one, one, two, fourteenth. Okay, I'm definitely going to get a hint from Ava. Like, so, so it's based on a real, a real thing. I know what's on floors 1, 2, and 14, so the answer must be one of the other floors. There's no doubt about that. It'd be great if Ava just knew <laughs> which floor it was on. You've not been given you've not given me much information here, Kraus. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> some floor but not on the something floor. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, let's see. So it's not on the something. That's a hint. Okay, so it won't be on the 13th. Uh, okay, so 13th, no. Because that starts... So 12th. No. 11th. No. So that would be anything after... Okay, so it's not going to be on the... Because it would have to be... So 1st, 2nd. So 3rd... Could be third, because it ends with an RD. Fourth, no. Fifth, no. Sixth, no. Seventh, no. Eighth, no. Ninth, ten, eleventh. Okay, so if we're going by it's not on a something. Auntie Ava suddenly stumbled on something. Then she started counting on her fingers, starting from the first floor. What were the options again? What were the options? Yeah. Yeah, so it's got to be the third. That was an option, right? One. Right? So third, so... But it says that it's on the something floor. But the company president insists to me that it's not. So first, fifth, seventh, ninth. So third is the only one that doesn't end in something. So it's B. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it must be very humbling to be defeated by a six-year-old. <laughs> I mean, I would have kept that information to myself, Kraus, but... <laughs> Apparently, Uncle Kraus once had this puzzle shown to him, and he wasn't able to answer it right. And he was so proud, too. He looks a bit bitter that a kid like me was able to solve it. I think what's really frustrating him is Auntie Ava solving it, not me. I don't know, I feel like I'd be more insulted about the child solving it. Weird. <laughs> I guess even with the pieces, there's still that competitiveness between them. <laughs> not yours, Ava. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Krauzo-ji-san. 
君が名で私は誇らしいよ。これで私たちの問題はおしまいです。楽しんでもらえたならいいのだね。メダルの枚数など気にせず、みんなの鬼門難問をたっぷり楽しんでほしい。今夜があなただけの素敵な夜になることを願っていますよ。楽しんでるわよね、私たち。ふふ、カウセナツィ <laughs> smiled at them as they dashed away. I wonder if will this be a moment where Natsu and Beto will have a heart to heart where she's like, hey, sorry for throwing you off a cliff. Also, <laughs> on the other side of the room, Angie and Ava were counting the medals they had gathered so far. Angie and Ava. Such an unexpected pairing, but they looked like they were having a great time. After saying this, Natsui bit back her own words and stared at the floor. Oh yeah, yeah, about that. This really is. It does feel like this is a big therapy session where everybody's just getting everything out in the open. They're airing their, you know, their uh, regrets and making their amends. わたくしの責任です。そなたの気持ちもわかる。身ごもれず何年も肩身の狭い思いをしてきたのだ。そこに突然素性の知れぬ赤ん坊を渡され、養子にしろと言われたらショックを受けぬ女などおらぬ。
本当だぜだって全部金蔵が悪いんじゃねえかあいつが隠し子なんか作るから悪いんだし何しろお前への預け方が特に悪い子供が生まれないから養子にしろなんてのじゃなくかわいそうな子だから育ててくれぬかとかそなたを傷つけの言い方はあったはずだこれだから男は金蔵は<笑>もはや恨みはないそれでもそなたの十字架は軽くはならぬかはいあなたにどうすれば償えるかじゃあこうしよう両腕を広げよえこ,こうですかナツナツウィスプレッドアームズアンサータンリーベートウレッフォーワードアンハグダーチャイトああウィフカムソファーこれは二度と言わねえから一度くらい言わせろよわらわはよ自分の母親に会ったことさえねえんだからよ Still hugging Natsui, Beito spoke in a whisper. He spoke those words she would certainly never say again. Maybe she's gonna say mother. Except I feel like that wouldn't be appropriate. No, she did! She did! I guess she did treat her like a, a, her, her proper child in, you know, that world where Leon existed. That was really sweet. All right. Well, that was a really fun episode. I love the fact that we actually can participate and have some control over things. I love riddles. So this was just a blast. And it was also surprisingly heartwarming with the characters making... Peace with each other, uh, especially that moment at the end with Beato calling Natsui mom. I'm like, oh, oh, my heart. That was really fun. It was really fun to get back to this. So, so far, I'm not doing terrible. I did miss the one riddle, unfortunately. I think I'm overthinking things sometimes. I tend to do that, but we'll see if I can keep up this pace uh, with the, the other part of uh, this quiz night. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing it, seeing what the game throws at me and also seeing... Uh, other characters that, you know, are going to, like, make their amends with each other. So overall, really enjoyed this one. I hope you guys did, too. Thank you so much for watching, and stay tuned next week for Part 89. Until then, bye, guys. Special shoutouts to my top-tier patrons. Kiori Makoto, SM, Revealing Storm, Tequila Mockingbird, Asborn Kennedy, Harry Gaziff, Icognito, Jared Fan, Joel Ustman, and Zorin Ether.